Luke, welcome to Meadow Lane. Your first ever visit, I believe. Yeah, no, I've never been lucky enough to play here. Um, past the stadium many times, but just never felt that we're at the various clubs that I've been at that we've played against Notts County. So it's nice to be here. It'd be lovely if it was full of fans and um, it won't be long until it is. But yeah, it's, it's a beautiful stadium. Just through the gap behind me, you can see the city ground, obviously Nottingham Forest, your former employers. So you do have a, a handle on, on Nottingham, Nottingham sport and Nottingham football, don't you? Yeah, no, I, I moved here in, um, a couple of years ago and went on Mil to Millwall on the second year of the contract. But um, I know Nottingham very well. It's not far from my hometown, Peterborough. Um, you know, a great sporting club. Obviously, you've got the cricket, the football, um, amongst the, um, many other things. So, so it's just a fantastic city for, for sport all around. And, you know, it'd be nice to get uh, see Notts County climb the table. Um, to climb the football pyramid in the next few years. Mm -hmm. So you joined on a short-term deal until the end of the season. What was it about that offer that made you want to take it? Um, well, you know, I think it's known that I've, I've turned down different things this year for personal reasons and, you know, I just didn't pursue things that were thrown at me. And I thought that that was the season dead and it would be a whole year without playing in goal, but an opportunity came around to, to come here. And like you said, it's just a two month thing, um, 10 games, believe it or not, you know, in that short period of time. So lots of football to be played. Um, but it, it was just the manager, I think, who, who approached me in the right way. Um, I can be somebody who makes decisions quite quickly. Um, and he caught me on a moment where I really wanted to to get involved in the project, whether it be for two months or you know maybe into the future, but the way he spoke and the way they want to play, um, it was very appealing to me, you know, and I wanted to give it a go, and and I jumped at the chance. It was like a 24-hour turnaround, less than that, before I heard about it to when I'd signed. Mm. Short term, the project obviously is is promotion via the playoffs, so it's uh, you know a pressurised situation to come into, Luke. But with your experience, I'm sure it's one that you're relishing. Yeah, obviously promotion is the main aim and we're falling out the playoffs now. Um, you know, we're eighth and there's there's no kind of getting away from that fact. Um, but we've got a few games in hand and I haven't seen the team play. I'm not going to sit here and say that we should be here, we shouldn't be there, just on the stature of the club. Because I think it would be quite um, you know, foolish to say something like that. But we're in with a good chance just by looking at the table. Um, you know, there's lots of games to play for. Ten games is still quite a, uh, a long period of time. So, you know, I'm going to take it one one game at a time and really kind of assess what where we're at and you know where I can help help the club. You mentioned Ian Birchnell was was pivotal in convincing you that this was the right um, project for you. What sort of details within that conversation were particularly pertinent? What made you realise that this was the right move? Well, I think when somebody um, calls you up from a football club, if it's not the manager, I think I've said on uh, different media outlets that you know it doesn't feel right from the start and he was the one who made the phone call. So I'd say that that was really important and, and as simple as that sounds to people listening, it might th you might think that the manager makes all those calls but they don't and uh, they get different people to ring and bits and bobs and that's not really for me. But the manager went straight to me and, and asked, me, asked me a straight question and from the start it was just positive, the way they want to play. I know he's where he's been over in Scandinavia quite a lot um, and that was very appealing and to be honest going back to your, your previous question the the challenge was probably the most the biggest draw to be eighth just outside the playoffs but with a chance you know it was a real challenge it wasn't like your 15th 16th not playing for anything um, I've been in relegation battles it's that they're not easy to come into but this was a different kind of challenge and you know I know we've got some tough games coming up but I kind of relished that and I, I could feel it within myself that I wanted to do it and I made that quick decision. You walked onto the training ground for the first time this morning, it's been a bit of a whirlwind day for your first visit to Meadow Lane, first training session, uh, beautiful sunshine, obviously a really nice training ground, great backdrop and everything, you know, how did you enjoy your first session? Yeah, it was nice, I was nervous actually. Were you? Yeah, really nervous, I thought that, um, you know, when you've not played in goal for so long, which, you know, I've put the gloves on this year and I've trained with different clubs, but um, it felt like it's been a long time and it's only those first few volleys from the goalie coach and then you realise, you know, and you feel a lot more comfortable, but it was a beautiful setting and, uh, you know, it, it was they, they they went easy on me. They know that I've not played a lot of football, but, you know, mentally I've got to be there very quickly. 
so that's kind of up to me there's not a lot the club can do so with with games coming so quickly it's up to me to get up to speed um, but you know I'm, I'm fit and healthy you know although I've had a year of lockdown a real lockdown um, you know I've kept myself fit in different ways so hopefully you know I can get on board as, as soon as possible. You joined a great goalkeepers union as is the traditional term in terms of Jake Keane a young goalkeeping coach and two really promising goalkeepers in Luke Pilling and Tiernan Brooks obviously while Sam Slocum sidelined with an injury. What are your first impressions of, of the group? Yeah, it's, it's the first time I think the goalie coach has been younger than me, so <laughs> um, by a good few years as well, Jake's about 30, I think he is, I'm 36, so um, yeah, that was nice to, to hear. <laughs> but no, the, the young lads, obviously I've not trained with Sam, I know Sam from playing against him when he was at Scunthorpe, but um, the young lads have been really good, train hard, um, that's what you want, and obviously, you know, I'm not a coach and I'm not here to coach the young lads, but... I think already they know that anything they need from me, you know, different bits of experience mm. that I have, then obviously I'll try and help them. But um, yeah, it's nice to get the goalkeeping work done because, like I said, if you're not working on that every day, you can kind of drop out of it fitness wise. But it's a great setting. I mean, this, the training ground's fantastic, this, the stadium's fantastic. It just, you know, the club now needs momentum from what I've seen, it needs a good bit of momentum from the bottom up. And, you know, I think the right people are in place to do that. Outside of the goalkeeping group, that you know a few of the lads, don't you? I think Jim O'Brien, Michael Doyle, and Ben Turner. You've 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 seen you've played alongside them or played against them in the past. Yeah, both Ben and uh, Doyle I've played with at Coventry, and Jim O'Brien at Barnsley. So some good characters in just in that three alone, isn't there? Yeah, no, some top characters, and there's no surprise that Doyle's still you know doing a great job at the age of 39. Um, you, you know, good top pros. Yeah pros that work hard on and off the pitch which means like 100% in training professionalism um, you know making good decisions and yeah they're quite vocal and they're quite strict with people around them but that's what you know football requires you know certain certain roles like people being vocal and the club's got that you know and them three just alone um, it, it is a good sort of foundation for the players style of play obviously we're a team that plays out from the back for those who haven't watched your career sort of in detail, is that a, is that a style that suits you? Do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I was at Barnsley for seven, eight years. We preferred to go long a lot of the time, and then when I moved to Greece, um, you know, that was one of the main reasons was to play football, which I think is one of my strengths. And then I learned it actually at the age of 29 to 32. I learned how to play from the back more than more than ever. So you know, it was a bit late, but I realised that is my game. Um, you know more than shelling it long. So, what's the key to being able to do it well as a keeper? Because it obviously seems quite simple. You just play short passes instead of long ones. But presumably, there's positional elements, there's decision making involved. Yeah, loads of things. I mean, it looks easy from the Sky Sport cameras that are so high up. But when you're ground level, it's a lot different. There's decisions, quick decisions to make. You have to go long sometimes, and uh, I think it's having the calmness and the experience to to do it when you can. Um, you know, it's not always going to work, especially on poor pitches. But that's the philosophy of the club. Then, then that's great for me. Um, you know, I'll be trying to get up to speed as quick as possible. You mentioned your time out in Greece. That involves a few seasons playing in the Europa League, didn't it? Um, just tell us about some of your the best stadiums you played in, the best memories you have from from that time. Um, yeah, no, uh, the derby of eternal enemies is Panathinaikos Olympiakos. So it's kind of the most ferocious derby in Europe I think is stadiums obviously that get more fans and things like that flares everywhere yeah so when I went the the fans the away fans had already been banned so for the three years I was there there was no away fans because they'd had a lot so much trouble they had to cap it so when we played away it was um, very <laughs> hostile um, and when you played at home the pressure was on so they're, they're top memories and then obviously the European Games is you know something that I didn't think I'd do because I was a sort of a championship keeper and um, you know my first European game was away at PSV Eindhoven which was you know a really good memory because that was my you know I'd only been there a few weeks and just got in the team straight away and we got a good draw there I think it was 1-0 and you know I was lucky to play in a few places that I wouldn't normally get to play and Ajax away um, stands out but yeah, it's it a fab, fabulous sort of way to um, 
progress my career it was at the time and you know it was the best three years of my life probably and something that I'd certainly push on to any other young British players um, that don't think about playing abroad. As you mentioned you've had a bit of time out from goalkeeping so do you think it's going to be your experience you know your, your long career is going to be a massive help in terms of you just being able to get straight back into the swing of it? Yeah maybe I mean hopefully I can I can't I can't yeah. say that um, you know, it, I'm there's no be, guarantees. Yeah, there's no guarantees. Obviously, I've got, I've, I've, I have quite a lot of experience. Um, you know, at a football club, I haven't played in goal properly this season. Sorry, one game this season, which isn't a lot. Um, but you know, with with the amount of time I played in goal, it, it doesn't take long to pick it back up. You know, I'm not coming off the couch. Like I said, I'm not coming. Hopefully, too overweight or anything like that. So, you know, hopefully, it will be a case of just feeding myself into it and you know getting up to speed in the next few weeks. Nice long trip to Torquay on Saturday. Um, I wonder if as a new signing that's exactly the sort of first weekend you want really because you're going to obviously go and stay away with the lads you can really sort of get to know them a bit better and spend some proper time with them before the game. Yeah well it's not like a relationship it's not uh, we don't need to go to the cinema and things like that. No even the last two days when I signed I met, met a lot of the lads and today you, you get to do things quickly but I am having to fast track that because I need to get hands on with a lot of them in terms of communication and names. Um, you don't want to start off already on the back foot you want to go into Saturday knowing everybody in front of you. doesn't mean you're going to know everything about them but yeah, that bus journey, um, although it's quite horrendous, quite a long way away, you know, it's a good time to you know, maybe chat to people that I've not met before. So, you know, it'd be, it'd be a nice to nice to do a trip like that early on. Well, Luke, it's great to have you at Meadow Lane for the very first time and we look forward to seeing what you can do. Thanks very much. Cheers.